Hello and welcome back to another episode of Leisure Luke. I am doing something quite a bit different in today's video. As you can tell, I have uh, the model pulled up for the heist and the launch and the key and the puzzle, puzzle boxes all combined into one mega assembly. And I'm going to do a little modeling. A lot of people comment and say, hey, I'd love to watch you 3D model, see that process, do a tutorial, show me how to do it, teach me. And uh, I figured I'd start with something like this. It's, it's a lot easier than people think. This is not going to be a tutorial. This is just going to be me sort of having fun modeling uh, a few fun things. Because in this design process, <clears throat> we have, uh, well, we're, we're to a point where it gets fun. And the reason is I've got the mechanisms holding the puzzle boxes together pretty much designed. Most of them have been printed. Uh, they're functioning well, so mechanically, this puzzle box is sound. At least as far as all the gray material goes. This the, the lid is this piece, that's the lid. And the base is this piece, that's the base. So those two parts mechanically are ready. I just have to make them look pretty. Because right now it just looks like four puzzle boxes all bolted together. And to do that, I'm thinking I'm going to use things like this. I made these dice that I think look kind of cool. And I can cut out where they're sticking out from this puzzle box. So you have like two dice in the corner. I had a big rocket here. <laughs> I see, I called this a big rocket. That would kind of sit in the, the launch puzzle box. Um, I'm going to make the pieces show up here. One second. The launch. Yeah, so it would sort of be protruding from the launch puzzle box. I'd kind of cover up the logo. Maybe I can slide it over a little. But I thought I thought that would look kind of cool, and I thought maybe I could make this part look like a fin. I don't know, so it, so it sort of blended in. But I think I'm going to have sort of objects as the sculpted exterior of this puzzle box. So it sort of looks like a pile of toys, and obviously, um, you know what the, what it is is a m sequential mechanical puzzle box. This has a start and a finish, and you have to do something like 20, 25 sequential steps to unlock this puzzle box, and then resetting it is going to be super quick. So that's what the puzzle box is. And we're going to design some stuff. Let's start with a casino chip. I thought the casino chip was sort of in theme with the, the cards and the spades and the heist. And um, I, I want to design a casino chip in 3D space. And it is going to be a circle that will be 40 millimeters in diameter. So I'm starting by using the sketch tool. This is, a, this is like a pile of tools and toolbars at the top of the page. Um, so I hit this Create Sketch icon, and now I have to pick a plane to sketch on. I can either choose to sketch on a plane that already exists, like this one, which is the, the lid of the puzzle box. And if I chose to sketch here, I would have all the cutouts, like all these letters that are cut out as points, like lines along the edge. And if I choose a plane like this, um, there will be no edges to interact with. So we just want to make a casino chip in free space and see if it fits somewhere on the puzzle box. So I'm going to select this XY plane and <laughs> find an open spot in my document to sketch. Once my computer lets me, there we go. And we're going to set this diameter to 40 millimeters and boom now we have our circle and then the casino chips in real life are all 3.5 millimeters tall um, I just wish they were a little thicker but I guess that's what we're gonna use we're gonna use 3.5 so I'm gonna extrude which is under well you would have to finish Sketch, and then you could select an extrude button, but I can just hit E. 
E is a shortcut to extrude, and I get this little pop-up here with my extrusion parameters. Um, but the height is already uh, ready for me to enter, so I'm just going to enter 3.5 and hit enter. Just like that, we have a casino chip. But this is Leisure Luke. We don't we don't have plain discs on our channel. No, no, no. This this should be fun. So we're gonna create another sketch, which is gonna be like the image on the casino chip. So I'm gonna have an interior circle, and I have a pile of casino chips. It's something I collect. Are like one dollar casino chips from all the casinos that I've been to. Um, as a since as a kid we used to vacation to Las Vegas. My family just likes gambling, I guess. And um, we'd go to the sand dunes and we'd go to the movies and we'd go see, like, in person the American Choppers and um, Count's Customs and things that we saw on TV and the Discovery Channel. My dad and I would go to the those places and take pictures with the, the things from the TV show. Anyway, I have a pile of casino chips and I found one that I like so I'm kinda gonna base my measurements off of that and the design off of that um, we're gonna go 26 millimeters in diameter for a circle 26 there we go and then I need to make these sort of swoopy images and there are four of them so I really only need to make my sketch on a quarter of this, and then I can reflect my sketch over these uh, reflection lines. So I could draw the shape by hand in a few different ways. I'm just deciding based on the shape which I will choose. Um... I think I'm going to make my life easier and use another reflection line at 45 degrees. Doesn't matter what length this is, but you can hit tab to go back and forth between the two entry fields for this line, which is the angle and the length. And I'll just make it any length, it doesn't matter. And then I need another circle from one of the shapes. There we go. I get 36. And then the shape kind of has like a swoop here. Like that angle. And then there's a line offset from that. Let's call it negative. About that thick. So this is sort of the shape that I'm looking for, I think. I think that looks about right. So now I'm going to reflect some of these lines that I care about. Oops. Care about that one. Over that line by using this uh, this mirror icon and what this does is I get to select all the elements of my sketch that I care about and then I'll be able to reflect them over a given line in space so I'll pick these objects and reflect it over this line and then it shows up kind of in uh, black hit OK and we have our reflection. I'm just going to do that four more times until we have the shape we're looking for.
these over this mirror line and then reflect all of this over oh, rats I spent a lot of time redoing stuff reselect all these pieces if you're wondering why my puzzle boxes take so long it's because I accidentally right click or I click something off the screen and then all my highlights change or fusion free 360 froze and I lost my work that's that's mostly why my puzzle boxes are slow all right so this is sort of the design on the chip and and on the chip, it's in a different color, so we're going to make it an indentation, since since we're most of us aren't going to be printing this in different colors. So I'm going to just extrude this. Minus 0.6 is a nice indentation size. Um, but I'm going to stack these together, and I don't want a giant gap there, so I'm going to go minus 0.4. But for letters and stuff, I always use minus 0.6 as, as the indentation. That kind of looks like a casino chip. You could fool me. I like it. Um, I'm going to extrude. I want the same imprint on the opposite side. So I'm going to use this extrusion technique again. I guess I didn't explain that. Um, I don't know. That's how I built the circle. Now we're just cutting away. Because if you pull up, you, you build. And if you push down, you cut away. And that's extruding, either out or in. And you can also extrude the difference, which is called intersect. And then you're essentially going to be left with what would be intersecting the two. So you can delete, you can add, or you can define the intersection. But we are going to cut. And we want this print on the bottom. So I'm going to set an offset. Right now we're cutting or adding from the location that I highlighted. But if I do the offset plane and we make it minus 3.1 no 3.3 it was 3.5 to start then we went down 0.2 offset minus 3.3 and we're going to cut Uh, maybe it is 3.1. Must be. Offset minus 2.1. How come we're not cutting? Oh, I went down 0.4. So we want to go to 2.7. Ugly math. Sorry about that, everybody. I was thinking I went down point two. And then I also want to indent this little square everywhere. Which I'm I can do one of two ways. Um, maybe I don't care. Nah, I want that indented as well. I'm going to have to draw another circle to do that. Hmm, that's a bummer. All right, create another sketch. So we're going to sketch on this face. And then we're going to redefine our line using this offset tool because I know it was a two point four millimeter thick gap and uh, what I'm trying to do is cut down here so I'll draw another circle just inside the exterior circle which is 40 millimeters I want a point four millimeter indentation here's that math again I'll go 39.2 and then we're gonna extrude down Yeah, 
that's the shape I want. Very cool. Um, not easy to print. Ah, shoot. I made it, and it's not easy to print. Because a printer, like, on the bottom or the top, like, it could print the top of this fine. <clears throat> but this is kind of like a big, giant table. You know, it's, I mean, it's very, it's not very tall, but it doesn't matter how tall it is. This is a lot of overhang for a 3D printer to print in space, sort of unsupported. So we're going to change the design a little. And all we're going to do is have more surface area brought in. And I can do that by using Q, which is a shortcut for offsetting the face. I think you can go modify. It's also press pull here. I use this all the time. So we're going to select our faces. And pull them inward to kind of reverse. So we had like, it was skinny and then fat. Now we're going to do it so it's kind of fat and then skinny. Like that. Um, I'm going to go out a little further. And then have a bigger inside here make this circle bigger as well. Sorry, I'm, I'm making this up as I go. There's not like a plan to this when I start. I just need to make it printable. I followed my design to begin with and now the design let me down because of its 3D printability, so. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. because the original image wouldn't have uh, 3D printed the way I've cut this. But I kind of like the way it looks, so I'm going to I'm going to try to get it to a shape that's similar but 3D printable. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's fine. 15 millimeters on the inside and I don't remember what the outside was. So we'll do the inside first. And I could have done them both at the same time, but I was not sure if the design would look good. 15 millimeters on the inside. Ooh, do I like that more? Ah, that wouldn't print well either. To highlight each of these and add them together, I'm just control, click, and control, click. And then, then you can maneuver them all at once with that press pull function. And I can kind of see through my chip so I can see where my old other line was. Must have been there. Okay, and that is our poker chip, which could go in a few different places, but we could do more still to this, because we could still like indent a logo or some letters or something. I've been thinking about calling this Casino. If, if, if any of this is casino themed, which I don't want to do because I would actually like to make a casino themed puzzle box. So I don't want to make this one casino themed. But I might put like um, a logo on this that makes it look like it's from a casino. Let's do this. Let's create another sketch. This time I'm going to add text. And I'm going to do two different texts. You just have to enter the, make the shape anywhere you're going to move it around and then just enter your number 
which are your height and millimeters. And I actually wish I could change the character space in between the just the one and the zero, but I don't think I can do that. Minus one. No. Point one. Apparently can't do minus. Okay, I don't like the way the one and the zeros are spaced, so I'm gonna do the zeros as one image, and then the one as a separate image, which is annoying. But if I go to create text again, it'll uh, it'll have all the same settings as I just used, so it's fast. trying to slide them over and I don't know how to do that but maybe I'll just move the chip next time before I indent it all right one more text for like a money sign That'll probably go here That'll be smaller not that small I, I think like size of letters seem to show up on our 3D printers at the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, usually around eight millimeters of height, six six to eight, depending on what the letter is. Okay, and I'm bad at moving letters around in Fusion 360. I'm sure there's a technique Maybe you're supposed to move, I don't know, but I hate it. It's, I don't know why, <laughs> why it's so hard to do. This is not the right way to do it, but it'll work. Cause it always, it always wants to pivot. When you go to move stuff around, it pivots. And the numbers do, and I hate it, and I don't know why it does that. So, you know, I just wish I could move this S over, and I don't know how to do it. Move. Oh, that works. Hmm. My letters may be too big. Like what kind of what is how what is this? This is this is what you think I'm trying to do? No, why would you make <laughs> why would you make the numbers do this? Obviously this isn't what I'm trying to do when I'm moving these around. Look, and now I can't even get them back back into where they were. How stupid is this? Who designed this? No, this is not how I want to move my numbers. Jesus. Now I've sorry. Now I've gotta do this again. I'm gonna delete these. No, no. Mm, I wish my numbers were all smaller. Make them 11. But like this number movement thing, I just, it's crazy. It's crazy madness. Move. Oh no. Oh no. <sighs> this is embarrassing for me, guys. This one moves. Okay, so if I space this out, that'll be fine, and then we'll move the chip. Okay, we have a plan. Move. I want to move bodies. Select this chip. Reorient. And move it there. Okay. And then we can, again, extrude these. We'll go minus point four again. 
Uh, yeah. How does it look? <laughs> uh, it looks... It doesn't look good. It doesn't look... It doesn't look right. That's for sure. Something about that looks... Real janky. I don't know what the, what's wrong with that one. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Okay, let's do the other side. I'm gonna make this one have a, a logo, which is easier. I'm gonna create text again. But this time, I'm gonna have it follow a path. And then you pick your path. I'm gonna call this Casino 51, because we gotta stick with our space theme. And then pick a good font. And uh, bold doesn't make a difference. We're gonna put on the inside of our path. And then we have this character spacing, and now we'll use this to start spacing out our letters. Jesus, character spacing 10, 20, 30, 40. 45. That kind of looks good. Maybe a little more. 36. 37. Yeah. Cool. Casino 51. Nice. Yeah, that's a cool poker chip. That could be the thumbnail. I think that looks good. And then another thing you can do in Fusion 360, which is just, this is low-hanging fruit, so I'm going to show you, is you can add color to it. So if we knew we were going to print, you know, some layers in white and some layers in blue or something, you can right-click anywhere. Um... Oh, you, sometimes you can right-click anywhere. Okay, you can right-click on a... Am I... Um, oh, it's just lagging. Okay, got our body. Right-click, click Appearance. And now I can add colors to it. I can make it any color. These are all the colors that I pre-made, but you can add all these different looks, look, make it look like paint or liquid or leather, glass. You can add all those looks to it. And uh, I don't know, then it just looks more realistic in your model to what it's gonna look like in real life. So if we wanted to apply blue, we could do that. And then we can also apply it to just faces. So if we just select faces while that Appearance menu is open, and then select our color and drop it onto the face. Boom! So this would look sick. Sometimes you don't know what it's going to look like until after you print it. But if you do this, you can kind of get an idea what it'll look like. Oops, I don't want to make the whole thing that. So if you printed this first in blue, like the first layer in blue, and then you switched to the to a layer of white, this would look amazing. Why can't I drop it into the hole? Come on, let me in. Come on, Fusion 360. Why aren't you letting me? Oh, that's cool. That looks super cool. Woo! I like that. I like that a lot.
That might be going into the puzzle box. Who knows? It, it wouldn't be a part of the mechanism. It would be a part of the case, so we wouldn't get any of the colors. Most people are going to print their case in stone material or gray or something else. People might paint it, though. If I, People always like painting 3D printed stuff. I could design the case so that it's non-mechanism dependent and therefore painting it would be completely acceptable. Huh. Yeah, yeah that, that's probably going to be the case either way. With the exception of like this hinge and some things like that. Interesting. All right. Well, we've made a casino chip. And it only took us half an hour. <laughs> half an hour to do. That's about how long stuff like that takes me. I mean, sometimes you draft an image and it's in the perfect spot and you're done in five minutes. But not that time. That We sort of thought our way through that casino chip. What else can we make? I, okay, on my list I have to make a little money bag. That's exactly the right height and 3D printable. So let's see what that's going to look like. I want to create another sketch. Close this appearance tab. What is that block? Where's my axis? Create a sketch. Here. And our sketch needs to be the sketch of a money bag, and then we'll revolve it. Um, I need to <laughs> pull up Google. Google. Um, cartoon money bag. Yeah, that's sort of the shape I want, I guess. Probably, I like this shape. How it looks full on the bottom and is swooping up. And then has a tie with the loose on top. That's the one I'm going to kind of try to mimic is this black and white one. I like that. Okay. I just need to create a line that'll be the middle line. Ooh, unless I want to make this thing out of like three spheres or like a hmm. Nah, nah, we'll keep this simple. Well, no, I'm gonna make this out of like three spheres so the bag has some shape to it, and then I'll make the tie out of a different shape. Okay, we're going to make like a lumpy bag. Okay, let me show you what I was going to do. I was going to draw a shape like this. And then like this. And then pick a low point. Go like that. And then revolve. So you hit finish sketch, and then we have this revolve capability. Where I can take that and spin spin it right around an axis. And that was going to be the base shape for my money bag. From there we can cut away things and, and do different techniques and add a, add a rope. So that wasn't a very good shape for a money bag, but we could, we could squish it in and make it look, look better. But now I'm going to make it out of like three kind of spheres. So that it looks sort of more like a lumpy money bag. And I'm going to put it in this corner. Just so we have some reference. Because I don't have anything in this corner of the puzzle box yet. I'm going to see how it looks here. So. I don't want to look at the door of the heist anymore. To hide all that stuff. Yeah, I don't even need this floor. I'm going to extrude out this corner of the floor. No, we don't want this sketch anymore. Okay. Sorry, I had to undo, undo, undo to get out of that little sketch menu I was in. I'm going to create a sketch here. 
where we just cut this out by extruding down. So we just had to draw the sketch to have a cutoff line, and we cut it down. Um, I wish all these lined up. Oh, I had a mistake the other day where I welded these tops and bottoms together. And I had to go back kind of far in time. That was why. I was trying to smooth these edges and I welded those together. There's some goofy things like that in this. Usually I don't use extrude because it'll cut or weld everything. I use push-pull because it doesn't and it does a better job. Um, what is this? The lid. Nice. Okay. This is where the money bag is going to sit. And as long as it doesn't touch this blue thing, really inside of probably this line, we're good. So the, the whole exterior shape of the money bag has to be there. I think this is going to look cool. I think we can do a good job. All right. Let's create a couple of spheres. Because I think that'll be kind of the shape. And then we'll just smooth out between the spheres. So create. How do we make a sphere? Probably just a circle. And then there's a cube. Hey, wait. Even better, I'll use this cube I've already got. Um, we just need to fillet all the sides. Filleting is a tool where you round the edges. So you can either select, here, I'll do this one at a time. You can either select an edge and hit F, which is fillet, brings up this fillet menu. And whichever edges you've selected. So right now I just have this front edge selected. I can apply, oh, apparently I had those four edges selected. I can apply um, a radius to it. So hit F, pops up the menu, select your one edge, and then you apply a radius. But my thought was, which was kind of happening a second ago, if I select all the faces, which then just fillets all the edges that those faces touch. And I start shrinking this thing, it's basically going to become a sphere. Or like, close. Okay, can't model a sphere, but ah, that's good enough. Cool. I'm going to move this. So this is also how you create a copy, because we're going to need three of these, so I'm going to make copies of them right away. Um, but I'm going to just make a perfect copy. I was going to make it bigger, but I actually think we're going to want them this size. Um, when you hit the Create Copy button, it takes a little bit. So I'm going to pause the recording and come back when this is done. And then once the create copy render is complete you can just drag it out and unfortunately I need three which means I have to sit through that render process one more time and create a copy drag that over as well that does take like a minute and a half maybe and I've got a wicked fast computer and that just takes forever for some reason this sphere shape really uh, took a while to render all right. Uh, you, you might see me kind of flying around like this. That's the shift and scroll wheel pressed down and then move the mouse. Um, sometimes I also navigate around by using this upper right navigation cube thing. So if you hit the home button, that's like the starting view of your entire project. Uh, and then you can hit these sides to be perfectly aligned um, with like the X, Y, or Y, Z plane. 
and then you can use these arrows to spin it and then you can click the edge too which is nice when you're trying to align something you can be at a perfect 45 degree angle view but sometimes when you're flying around the orientation gets messed up and it's nice to be able to just use this and when you're trying to reference something behind you know like if i want to draw a shape with the object behind it then using this to perfectly align is crucial so you can draw the exact same shape okay our money bag in the corner let's move these balls into position and i know i have a key there that i can't go in front of so i can't go in front of this line i've got to be behind here but like that would be perfect if that's like the low lump on the bag and then move these other ones as well this i can come out pretty far that won't be in the way so i will and then the other one i kind of want sitting up against like if it was leaning up against the pillar where that bag would be and that one will definitely have to get raised a bit it looks like actually the other two will have to come down because i want this to rest it has to be 3d printable right so i can't have these bottoms of the balls hanging in the air and i don't want to build a platform i want the bag to look like it's sitting on the on our space so i need to lower these to the ground so when i cut that bottom off it looks like a nice bag and that's about i don't know that's probably a 55 degree overhang which is pretty steep but a 3d printer will be able to print that and if the bottom of the bag is a little rough that's acceptable uh, and then i'll merge these three together and kind of smooth them out so it looks like a more like a bag and this i'm gonna bring little height wise let's bring it down just to give the bag some character yeah I like it and then that one I think is probably in a good spot okay now we're just going to combine these three shapes together by hitting this combine tool I guess it's just called combine select my three shapes um, you can do different operations with a combined tool, like you can delete one from the other or save the intersection of two shapes. We're going to join them and we're not going to save them after we join them. And it's just joining these three together so that we can fillet them along their edges, which I hope works. Ah, bummer. That was my big plan, everybody, was to fillet them. Hmm. Can I delete anything? Nope. How do I fillet something that cannot be filleted? Okay. I think the bag needs more curvature or it'll look like three balls stuck together oh there i can go maybe if i do one at a time i'll get lucky that's having a problem down here why don't i cut this right now okay the next thing i'm going to do to our three ball shape that's mm, maybe starting to look like a bag probably not <laughs> to anybody else uh we're going to split it with the bottom of our puzzle box so that the bottom is on an even even printing surface so you can see what it'll cut here these, these little parts off the balls Hit okay to do that you just select the object and then you select the plane that you're trying to use as the cutting plane and i'll delete those nice and then I was gonna kind of fill this in, but for now, if I 
delete this. Yeah, as long as we have like an intersection, I think we're gonna be okay for for making the shape we want to make. So so when filleting like this, there are certain intersections that the computer can't render. And like I'll get to a certain point pulling, there I go, where it can't render beyond that point. And it, it just because like an angle becomes impossible if you try to stretch it too far, you get to a physical limitation, or the computer can't do certain types of rounded three-dimensional corners that were custom sketches on top of each other in certain ways. I don't know, it sounds weird, but um, that's the case. And so now we have kind of like our money bag shape. Yeah, I could have made this a lot bigger. Could have made it a lot, lot bigger. I can always add to it. Let's keep going before I lose my one viewer. Um, we're gonna draw our next sketch at the top of this. And I actually need the lid on the puzzle box to know what this is going to look like. Because this needs to look like the the wavy top of the bag, right? In our reference picture. See how it's like tied here and then there's like a top to it? That's the part that I want to draw now. And I think maybe I have a plan. So we just need a plane to sketch on. And that's going to be this one. Yeah, that's going to be that one. And we're going to use this line of best fit tool. All right, sorry, I hit start sketch, and then or create sketch, and then line of best fit. And we're going to make a wavy, wavy, kind of wavy bag shape like that. It's really technical sometimes here, how we make our shapes. Minus two, okay, plus two. Well, that looks good. That looks like the inside of a bag for sure. Um, yeah, in fact, let me, let me redo this. I'm gonna finish this whole loop shape so it lines up with our stuff. I'm going to shape this into the puzzle box. Uh, maybe not, but I am going to connect these two so that when I do my outline, it's a full 360. Nice. Um, sorry, to draw this red shape, you use I'm using this offset tool, which just, once you have a line, it offsets it. And it, I wasn't getting my corners filled in in different things, so I wanted to make a full three-dimensional, or a full round shape that has you know all the ends connected so that I was getting a full fill-in with that offset. And then you just type in how far apart you want the two lines to be. And that's your sketch. So that kind of looks like the top of our bag. And we're gonna extrude all of that all the way up to this surface but I don't want to cut I want to join but no you know what I'm gonna go new body just so this is a brand new body which means it's not connected to anything it's just its own thing because now I need to give the big top like the shape that it's supposed to be so I'm going to use this chamfer tool, that, which is under modify chamfer. You can also use D as the shortcut. And we're going to want to go all the way around, and we're going to want to chamfer two distances, which means, oh, wow, I really can't chamfer this shape. What if I do it without that back end? Nope, I can't chamfer that shape. Shoot. In theory, a chamfer adds a 45 degree edge, but like I said, sometimes with custom drawn shapes and things, we can't get our shape that we want. Just want like a, you know, bag toppling over looking shape. 
How do I get that? How do I get that? I'm gonna have to draw something and then revolve it to get the shape I'm after. Which is fine. I can get two shapes at the same time, maybe. Um, hmm. Okay. We're going to have to ignore this sort of a little bit for now. We're going to draw another sketch, which is going to be our... We're going to draw the shape that we're trying to remove from the piece that we just made, the bag top. And, and like I said, guys, I'm making this up as I go. Um, it's not always going to be perfect. We need a wide start. And then we'll kind of go like that. Oh, I don't like that. This, is gonna, this has got to be pretty smooth, this bag. Plus, it's got to be 3D printable. Let's do the rope tie part. Where's the rope tie gonna be? Maybe that'll help me visualize the rest of it. Three millimeter around rope. And then that's gonna be the rope that holds the bag together because we're gonna revolve this shape. I kinda want that there. Now we're going to, oh, is that the outside of the sh shape? I need to delete, because we're deleting this from what we have. So I need this outside corner part. And I'm going to delete the, the rope part as well. So finish our sketch, and then use that revolve tool that I showed you earlier on my original sketch of the bag to cut out. bag topper thing okay okay guys that's more like the shape we're going for that looks okay um, take the lid remove it what else are we hitting now oh, we're hitting all sorts of stuff I don't want to hit anything what is this piece sometimes I don't know what the pieces are called that I'm trying to like I'm trying to hide them so they're out of the way so they don't get cut. You can also do that by selecting the objects to cut and unchecking them, but the rendering, for some reason, that process takes longer. And this is a large file, so I have to uh, avoid that. I don't know what this piece is called. Could be anything. <laughs> um, and we're cutting that somehow well that's the key back okay so the only other piece we're cutting that we don't mean to be cutting is this one and I can delete that cut out of it so we'll do that that's good let's move these two somewhere else so we can work on them without stuff around them again and then fix this. Perfect. Okay. Our money bag is coming together. Unfortunately, I didn't make my square long enough, so we gotta delete some of these edges, which is fine. Oh, yeah. Can you see it? Can you picture the money bag? Come on. A little money sign on it? Should we make it a different color? Will that help? Um, let's go appearance. 
what kind of appearance would be the right color? We need like a sandy brown stone wood. It's in the miscellaneous category. Foam. What color is the polyurethane foam? Nope. Polystyrene? Sure, polystyrene's kind of bag colored. If I didn't have the um the the lines on it, it would look like a bag. Let's make a money sign for it. It needs a money sign. So we're gonna just create another sketch somewhere in space. And put a nice big money sign out out here. And I liked how it was in italics. Nah, maybe I like this more. And let's make it big. Let's do like a 20 millimeter one. So people know. People people know the no. And then we'll extrude it backwards so it's gonna like protrude from the bag. Because again, we can't just put a color on it because you can't 3D print colors, so it's gotta be a different surface. Yeah, let's extrude. Uh oh. Okay, that's just the bottom of my project, and I have it set up to not show me anything below, like, the surface. Because sometimes I use that to look at cross-sections of things. But this is this is a whole solid piece here. Let's see if we can stick that on the money sign on the bag. I'm just using this stuff to tilt. sink it in I think the better maybe it's too reclined how's that yeah we'll just delete that kind of part out we'll just cut that off by splitting this body putting this body with this face. Nice. And then whatever little chunk we cut off here, body 947, we'll delete that. Still aren't one part. These are still two separate pieces. So I'm just wondering if I actually want to rotate um, a little bit more. That looks good. We will uh, combine these now. And then I'm going to kind of cut away at the money sign a little bit so it doesn't look like it's so structured. Or maybe see if I can make it look cool. Oh, maybe I should do that now before everything is combined.
The lane doesn't seem to work that well. Hmm. Sometimes when filleting doesn't work, you can try that chamfering. Sometimes for some reason chamfering works when filleting doesn't. And also doesn't work. What, what does it say the problem is? That part? Okay, so let's just select all of our edges. Sometimes when I, you know, try to make it do something, it can't. So then you have to do it a bit more manually. And I just won't chamfer that center thinner thick piece of the money sign. It's hard to select each of the little edges that I care about. Okay. What if I just jam for these? Still doesn't work. Oh, yeah, that works. That's... Yeah. That's cool. That'll do. And then... I know this doesn't really look like a money sign that would actually be on anything anymore. But I think 3D printed that's going to that's going to look okay. God, now do I wish I had that would really extended so that it all like went into the bag kind of and I could still do that a little. I'm doing this so that it's more 3D printable. It's that kind of overhangy spot. I'm still gonna chamfer this, I think. Just not much, but a little. 0.6 is sometimes a nice look. Yeah, all right. I'm ready to merge these two pieces. We're going to have to combine. Forever weld our dollar sign to our money bag. Okay. It's done. I'm going to see if I can fillet some of these edges. See if they look nice. See if the software will let me do anything. Because if we got nice fillets in here, that'd be cool. You could get the bag to look like it was a part of the... Thing and then just smooth, but I don't think we're gonna be able to render much. That's okay. I don't mind the way it looks. I think it looks a little stupid, but I think it'll look better. Uh, it'll, it'll look better 3D printed in real life. I think that'll have kind of a nice effect. It'll be a lot more subtle once it's 3D printed versus how it kind of looks now. Okay, let's make the top look more like shaped because it doesn't look shaped and, and it should we can there might be a tool watch this me i've tried to use a tool that i've never used before fillet this would look nice Ooh, yeah let's go nope two i'll take it there, there's a way to make it like a uh, hollow in the middle. Remember how we had that sort of, oh, shoot. Nope, never mind. Can't do that. This bag has to have something in the middle of it. But that something in the middle is a thing I'm not telling people about yet. Sorry, everybody. That's my bad. <laughs> That's my bad. Okay, let's get the rope tie on this bag. Does that mean this thing is starting to look okay?
No, there, there, but there is a tool still that I want to use. That is a shell tool. And I know of it, but I haven't actually used it. Modify shell, shell, shell. Remove materials from a part interior. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm hoping this is like extruding where you can... I don't think so. I don't think that's how this works. And it can render. Okay. I wonder if I can do like a hard chamfer. Make that look good. Um, hmm. Let's just worry about the rope. Let's inspect to see what our radius is. We're not going to be able to figure that out either. I want to know what the interior radius is so I can make my rope donut shape. I can't unless I go back to the original sketch, which is a pain. Okay, just making a new one from scratch. Create a torus. Um, diameter of the middle of the circle. What do we think it is? Eight? Ten? Twelve? I'm going to go ten. And the diameter of the torus is three. Nice. I've never made a shape like that. You know what I want to know, though? If I have a shape like this, so this is going to be the, the rope that looks like it's tying our bag together, which is very cool. I'll have to I'll, I'll fix something so that this looks right. That's going to be cool. I'll make it look good. Don't worry about it. Um, I want to see if I can put a, like a texture on this. Which I think I can do with a thread. Nope. Can't thread that face. Shoot. That, thought, that would have been cool. I wanted to put a thread on it and see what if that worked. What can I do with this face? Repeat thread, it says. But then it unselects. Okay. I'm going to figure out a way to make that rope look cool. Rope looks cool. 3D modeled rope should look really cool. <sighs> well bit frustrating. I think I'm going to stop us there. I still like that money sign. I think that's going to look good. Let's put an appearance on it just for kicks. We need a... We just need green paint. Metallic. Green. Green. Yeah. Let's go. I think that's going to look cool. Our little money bag. What is this material? Sandstone? Polyurethane. That's what we got. Nope. Pearl. Back of my poles. Polystyrene. That was the color. That'll look. Fine. <laughs> I can hear my comments being like, Luke, that looks like crap. But I don't think so. I think that's going to look good. 
I'll print one. I'll print one and we'll see how it looks. Let me put the stuff back in. So this is how I do a lot of my modeling. I don't have a, a much of a plan before I start. I just I guess I need a lid and the base. Which of these is the base? Guys, I think that money bag is going to look cool. I think it's going to look cool next to the heist, next to the vault, next to the vault door. We'll just blend it in, make the top look more like a bag. Make the rope look like a rope. I don't know what I'm, how I'm going to make the rope look like a rope. That that could that might be a very long process. We'll see. We will see. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments how I can make that rope look like a rope. All right. Well, cool. Casino chip done. Uh, casino bag, money bag. That That's not bad. We've got some dice, maybe a rocket. Still trying to figure out what I can make this shape look like, which is one of the new mechanisms, and what I can make this, this shape look like. But it does look like a rocket fin, so maybe I can do like half a rocket or something. I don't know. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe. If you enjoyed this kind of video, I can, I can do hours of this. I'm sure it'd be great for everybody to fall asleep to. If you have a hard time falling asleep, it's the most boring thing you can probably find on the internet. But people want to know how I model, and that's how. That's about. The, I, I go faster when I'm not explaining everything and stopping every five seconds. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at leisure underscore luke, where I'm gonna up upload very 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 short versions of this daily and we will see you in the next video